What is up guys, welcome back. Today I want to take a look at the most famous animation technique used in awards winning websites and that is the smooth scroll. We're going to use Next.js, GSAP and Locomotive Scroll to recreate the famous smooth scroll effect and see how we can create amazing animation with it. Let's get right into it. And as always, if you want to try out this animation for yourself, there is a link in the description below as well as the source code. So first of all, the most used library, I would say, um, maybe in the past, maybe not anymore, but in the past, the most used library was Locomotive Scroll, all right? If you look at most awards winning website, you will see they have the tags used by this library here. And what people didn't like about Locomotive Scroll is the way they do the smooth scroll is by hijacking the scroll. And so basically they're overriding everything and creating like a fake scroll with like transforms. So it's not the native scroll anymore. And this causes a lot of accessibility problems that a lot of people hate in general. But very recently, a new library came out, which is the Lannis scroll, all right? And I'm not gonna lie, the Lannis scroll bodied locomotive scroll. They completely changed the game because Lannis scroll found a way to make the smooth scroll native. And so what locomotive scroll then did is they released a beta, which is the locomotive scroll V5, which is now, if I if you look into it here, we can see that it, it is based on the Lannis scroll. And so it's not hijacking the scroll anymore and still has all like the, the nice things about locomotive scroll. Essentially, we're going to make a one pager that's going to be composed of four components. First, we're going to have the page component, which will initialize the locomotive scroll. It will also import all the other three components. And then there's the intro component. It has a background, a main image and a title. We're going to animate all of them using GSAP scroll trigger and the locomotive scroll library. After that, there's the description component. There's going to be five paragraphs that we will animate with scroll trigger. We will animate the left position and the opacity. And finally, there's the projects component. It's a very regular component, but there's going to be one image that will be changed with the state and it will also be pinned with scroll trigger. So the first thing I did here was to create the next application. And then I deleted everything in the page.js the global CSS and the page module CSS, just to start with a nice blank application. All right, so we're gonna start with the page.js. It's the first component, it's going to be the parent, and it's in there that we will initialize the locomotive scroll. So the first thing I did was to install the locomotive scroll v5, and for that, I used the beta tag to install the latest version. And after that, I import the library inside of a used effect hook. And if I don't, locomotive scroll is going to try to access the window and it won't exist at first because Next.js exists on the server before going to the client. And so we're going to have an error. All right, so here we are. I have an error here. I need to specify that we are on the client uh, because of Next.js. And then this should remove the error. And here I'm going to add some styling just to show you that the locomotive scroll is working. I can probably add like a bunch of div here, just a bunch of div. And then let's see, and I'm just going to enlarge this just to see you guys. And simply like that, we now have a smooth scroll. So very easily, all we have to do really is this piece of code right here. And with that, we have a nice smooth scroll on our page, which is great. And now we can move on to the next component, which is going to be the introduction. It's gonna have a background image, a main title, and a main image. We're gonna use GSAP to animate everything. All right, so I'm gonna close the demo here. And the first thing we can do is create inside of the source folder here, a components folder. And inside of that, we're gonna have all of the components. And I'm going to import the style sheet here, styles from the style sheet, and give a class name and call it like the intro here. Also, I have the images that I want to use for this tutorial. They are images from South America, some nice landscapes that I thought were cool. And so to use them, I'm just going to create here in the public folder, an images folder, and I'm going to drag them and put them here. And then here I've added some base HTML just to have a skeleton so we can work with the styling and make everything look good. All right, nothing too complicated here. I have a background image with a next image inside of it. And then I have the introduction here with the main image and then the title and then we can go ahead here and add some styling to all of that. So here I've added some simple CSS, put the background image in position absolute, give it a height of 140 viewport height so it's a bit longer than the height of the viewport, give some margin top to the intro container so it's kind of centered when we land and also put the intro image in position absolute so we can overlap the main title. And that's the result here and I've just realized that the visual hierarchy isn't so good and that's because there's a lot of brightness 
and there's a lot of like overlapping elements. What I can do here is uh, do a filter and adjust the brightness here. And maybe for the background image, I'm gonna put a filter and adjust the brightness. And then same thing for the intro image here. The intro image, I'm going to adjust it to maybe 70%. And now we have like a better visual hierarchy. And also there's like some weird margin here on the body. So you can just go on the body here and I'll remove the margin. And that looks pretty good. We have a smooth scroll with that. So let's start with the locomotive scroll. One thing that's so nice about it and the only reason really why I prefer to use that library is we can create some parallax extremely easily. And so let's see here. On the main image here, I'm going to add data scroll. And then I can add a data scroll speed. Data scroll speed. And I'm going to put it to like maybe 0.3. And if I save that, let's see this. And if I scroll, you see we now have a parallax, right? The, the speed is not the same. And so 0.3 means it's going to be like 30% of the original speed. And so we have a nice parallax. And then we can basically put the same thing, but on the title. I'm going to do 0.7, so it's a bit faster. And now you see that we have a nice parallax. And now we're going to add two animations on scroll. And for that, we're going to use GSAP. So let's go ahead here and install GSAP. And I'm going to reboot back the application here. And I can import GSAP from GSAP. And I can also import here the scroll trigger module from GSAP scroll trigger. Now we're going to use the use layout effect here instead of the used effect which is generally recommended by GSAP to use um, in a React environment, uh, simply because we want to wait for all of the elements to be mounted before doing any like on-scroll animations. First thing I wanna do is um, register the plugin. And then what I can do here is um, do a timeline and I'm going to do gsap.timeline. So I'll create a timeline. And inside of that, I'm going to add a scroll trigger and the trigger is going to be the document because I basically want to start the scroll animation right at the start. And so I can basically mention that the trigger should be the document and I can do the start should be zero. And so it's going to be at the top of the document. And then the end, I can do plus equal 500 pixels. And so it's going to be an animation for the length of 500 pixels. And then I can do scrub true just to say that the animation should be perfectly linked with the scroll bar. And with that, we're pretty good. I'm going to add some uh, markers as well, just to show you guys what we have. Okay, we are not seeing anything. I think he doesn't like the zero. I'm gonna specify top instead. All right, so here we can see that the start is right at the top of the document, and then it's 500 pixels of length. And so the first thing I'm gonna do here is import the use ref hook, um, just to target the elements and be able to animate them. Oh, I think the annotation is a bit weird here. I'm going to use basically here I want to target the background image so I'm going to do the use ref hook and I also want to target the intro image I'm going to use the use ref hook as well and then I can give here the ref that's the background image and then the ref here that's the intro image and so what I can do now is uh, target the timeline and I can add here a from and I'm going to target the background image. And I'm going to do that at the beginning, there should be a clip path of inset. I believe it's inset 15%. Now we have like a clip path of 15%. And then I'm also going to add like the body here. I'm going to do like a background color black. And then the next animation that I can add here is a two and I can target the intro image dot current and I'm going to target the height and I'm going to reduce it to 200 pixels and also and I will also add a zero here on the timeline just to specify that these two animations should happen at the same time and if I refresh that you can see that the height is being animated and there's a clip path but wait a minute it's, this is looking weird it's kind of getting like pancaked and so I'm going to add some styling just to fix that I can specify that the intro image here, the image inside of it should have an object fit uh, cover. And let's try this. And now it's looking better, but whoa, there's a little light here. I'm going to save and refresh, but it's kind of getting like pancaked from top and bottom at the same time. 
and so I'm going to do object position top and now it should be reduced by like from the bottom right and so that is looking pretty good to me and so for those of you that have a keen eye you might see there's like a flash what we would have to do in a production environment is to add a loading on top of that while the scroll trigger is creating all of its animation in the background all right so now we are done with the introduction component and we're going to move on to the description component so let's go ahead here in the components folder we can create a description folder and i can go in the page js here import the description from the components description and I can put it here all right so here I've added some basic HTML for the description component I have an array of phrases and then I map it to return a bunch of inner components called animated text and by doing that it's going to be easier to animate everything and so here's the HTML we have a bunch of phrases we are mapping the phrases and returning a component and here's the component and here we are simply returning the children inside of a div but instead I'm going to return like a paragraph here and if I save that I'm not seeing anything because they are like behind the background image so I'm going to go in the styling here it should be in position relative I change the z index here they are right and so here I'm going to do like a font size uh, I think that's too much I'm going to do three and then I can do color white and I can do text transform uppercase I'm gonna add some margin top, viewport height as well. There's a bit of like too much margin here. So I'm gonna do margin zero for the paragraphs and then like margin left 10 viewport width. And then I'm gonna change here the margin top. I'm gonna to do 30 viewport width instead. And this is looking pretty good. We are ready to animate this. I'm gonna go in the intro here and I'm going to copy those three imports here because I basically need the same thing. And I'm going to copy here the use layout effect as well and here I'm going to remove that but I'm going to keep the register plugin and then also create a ref here and I can give here the ref text to the children and then what I can do is create a gsap effect from and I can target the text and here I can add a scroll trigger on top of that and I'm going to have the trigger and I'm going to have the trigger to be the text itself the start being at zero pixels and at the bottom. So instead of having the trigger at the top here, we're gonna have the trigger at the bottom. The end should be at the bottom of the text plus 400 pixels. And I'm gonna do bottom again here. I'm gonna do scrub true. And with that, I can specify that the initial values should be left minus 200 pixels and the opacity should be zero. And let's try this maybe add some markers and here I have the markers the scroll start and the scroll end at the bottom that's the bottom and bottom here and then the scroller start at zero pixels at the bottom and then we have the start on top of every single paragraphs and now their opacity is working and this is the length which is plus equal 400 pixels and so that works fine but the left is not working and I believe we just need to specify that they are in position relative so they're able to move and that seems to be working. And that looks pretty good. And with that, we're ready to go to the last component, which is the projects component. And so for that, I can go here, create again, a projects folder, and I'm gonna add a class name, call it like projects. And then finally, I'm going to close the description here, close everything and the page yes here, I'm going to import. All right, and now we're ready to work on that component. All right, so I'll work on this component in two parts uh, since it's the, the most complicated one. We're gonna have first a div here with those three elements, and then we're gonna have another div with the project gallery. All right, so here we have an array of projects that has a bunch of objects with a title and a source. And so basically the image here will be the image of the selected project and once we hover on them, it will change it. And so to do all of that, we're gonna use the use state hook um, selected project and then we can have a set selected project as well should be the first one at first and so the, the, the image here is basically the image of that first project here right when I hover on it it's not doing anything because it's already selected at first 
So here I've added some basic HTML. I have a main div called project description. Inside of it, I have an image container that has the selected image. And then I've created two columns for the two descriptions. And then the image is taking like the full, the full width and the full height because we need to add some styling. So we can go ahead here and add some styling to this. And then here we have an image container and I can put it in position relative with a height of 100% and a width of 40%. And then I'm going to add some margin top, maybe 25 viewport height. I can add some padding too of like 10%, just so that here is it's aligned. Here it's the project description. Should be in display flex. And I can give it a height of 700 pixels with a gap of 5% and a width 100%. And I can put like a justify content space between. So let's see, I'll style the column first, give them a width maybe of 20%. That looks much better. And then I can specify here, like I did before, the image should have an object fit of cover so the image is not stretched. And this is looking pretty good. Now I just need to change like the font size here, maybe 1.5 viewport width. And this is the last column. It's, uh, let's see, last of type. I'm gonna put it in font size one viewport width, align items at the end. So this is looking pretty good. And with that, we can do like the project container at the bottom here. So it's gonna be like those four things here. And so here I've added the div and inside of it, I iterate all the projects to return another div with the title inside of it. And so it looks like this. Now I'm gonna add some styling to all of that project list and do like a margin top of like 200 pixels. And I can do display flex as well, justify content flex end. And I'm also gonna give the, like a border top, one pixel solid white. Looks good, font size maybe three viewport width. I'm also going to remove the margin from the paragraphs. I'll still keep some, let's try like this. And then the last one, I'm gonna do border bottom for the last one and that looks pretty good uppercase and I can change the viewport the font size make it a bit bigger and do like a font weight <clears throat> of 700 and that looks good it's a bit different than this one but I still like it and now to change the image here on the hover we can do that very very easily here add a mouse event on mouse over Going to trigger a function that will set the selected project and then we can do like the index and that should change the image on hover now on hover it's changing the image so that looks pretty good and then the last thing we want to do here is add a pin to that image here so that it gets pinned all the way through so for the pin i need a way to target the image and for that very easily i can import the use ref hook from react and I can create here a const image container and I can give the image container here the ref. And then I'm going to basically take the same thing as the description here, those three libraries. And I'm going to import them here. And I'm just going to put everything together here, the use state. Let me move that. And then I can do the views layout effect here. And then one important thing is to leave the parameters empty here so that it's only triggered once when the component mounts. Quite important for this case because we are changing the state already. So if we don't put this, this is going to get triggered every time the state is rendered. And so it's going to create like big bugs. So very important to put this here. And then what I can do is, um, well, register the plugin. So I can start registering the plugin and then I can create a new scroll trigger. So create. And the trigger here can be the image container.current. The top, I can do like zero pixels for now. The end can be like the whole document, right? So I can do offset height here, and then I can do pin true. And let's try this. And that, that looks pretty good. It's pinning well, and we can change the image, but personally, I think the space here is too tight, like it gets pinned like right at the top. So I'm gonna do minus equal 100 pixels here. And if I refresh, oh, still didn't work. 
Okay, I'm gonna do... Oh, it's not top here, it's start. <laughs> My fault. And then this should work, like minus 100 pixels. That should work. Good. And there we go. That looks pretty good. And with that, we are officially done with this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot about the smooth scroll. It was quite a long tutorial, but learned a lot. And um, if you like the video, please leave a like. It helps me a lot. And I'll see you in the next one.